just to show you straight away, you can see that this is also responsive. And to up the challenge, what I also did is I use a different font just to learn how to use custom fonts on Next.js. And also you can see here when you click, this is using a Ranix UI primitive. So these are things like pop-ups, modals, dialogues, and they take away all the pain of figuring it out. So if I click on tweet, we also have a nice dialogue that comes up. You can even hit the escape key and that will go away. So if I scroll, you can see that this is also sticky with a bit of a blur on the background. So it's learning how to do that. And also you've got this drop down menu here, which is also pretty cool. And you also got like this tool tip style. The tweets button is disabled by default and this may not be done correctly in code, but there's little things that you'll learn about different states of buttons. So let me know in the comments, what do you think of this Twitter demo? So I'm just going to share some of the resources that I used to help me complete this challenge. You can find this on GitHub, Twitter UI practice. I made this available and this is for you to practice if you want to try to challenge yourself, but you can see all the code that I've used. The reason why I went with Next.js is because I just was curious. I really want to learn about components, how they are made. And I did this in a previous startup using Angular, but I wanted to learn more on React. And Next.js, uh, the nice thing about it is if you actually try out the, the learn and the introduction, you just learn how to build an app from scratch. And it takes you through all the different steps. And then on to the last piece, which is Radix UI. And this is, is great. Why waste time reinventing UI components? And that's exactly that. So things like this, where you have a dialogue, it'll pop up and it takes care of this because there's so many things that go into components such as screen readers. And for example, here, you've got all these nice interactions. If I keep going, you even have sliders and you have a scroll area, which will be useful. You even have accordions as well which is what I ended up using. And then of course, to tie this all together, we are also using Tailwind CSS, which I've been using on a previous startup. So why did I even do this in the first place? So as a UI designer, I know HTML, CSS and basic JavaScript, but I'm always keen to learn and grow. So I thought, why not try and learn some React? But this can be quite a big challenge. So I didn't want to learn how to do the whole stack. I just wanted to learn how to do the UI or the front end and mainly just the main feed. So let me know in the comments if you are a designer who can code or if you're a designer who wants to learn how to code. And why should you consider doing this? So if you're a curious designer who wants to know how to build apps and focus on components, then I highly recommend it because you can then understand the limitations from design to development. So just to take you through some of the code, we have the readme here and just to remind myself, the goal of this project is to learn about Next.js. Well, the nice thing about Next.js is that you have components and this is where you break up the whole UI. So for example, if I was to go to pages and then we can go to index. So you can see here that this has the header, the tabs, this also has search. And then from there you have the different panel items. And let's just have a look. So here, as an example, we have the button. And the nice thing here is I end up learning a bit about TypeScript. So I wouldn't, again, I'm not going to consider myself as a front end expert next to yes. But the nice thing about this certain um, library CVA is that you can create different variants for buttons. So if you're familiar with Figma, you get to create different variants, which is very useful. And then you pass in these props or parameters into the button. So let's have a look at the feed. So here we have some objects. So again, I might not be saying this all correctly, but again, here we have objects and in each of these, we then have the feed items. So we have the name, the following, we also have a description. We have an image of the person as well, basically making all the data. And then what we're doing at the end of that, is we're then using a component with a map function, which then means we're mapping all the parameter, all the props to each of these allies, which have to have a unique key. And then we're going to 
then display all the different um, data. And the nice thing about this is when you're just doing plain HTML CSS, which I also love, you can imagine that you can end up copy pasting this code how many times? 10, 20 times. But the advantage of this is you're doing you're separating the data from the code. So you've got all the data in one go and it's nicely organized and then you're just mapping it out into a feature. So here you can look at a very simple component, which is the footer, which does have these simple footer links. So you can see here that when we scroll down, you can just see these very simple footer links. Okay, so let me know what you think about this demo. Is this something that you're gonna to try to do? If you already know HTML, CSS, Tailwind CSS, the next level would be to learn JavaScript and then go up and learn a React framework. So yeah, let me know how you get on. Leave a like, leave a comment, and I'll see you in the next video.